think Gen Z looks older than millennials. But some of them do cosplay as older. I went out and I observed Gen Z in their wild natural habitat. A social media influencer event. And I noted my findings to include in this video. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the social and beauty practices that got us here, including hair. Wigs play a part, but probably not in the way that you guys have been talking about it on social media. Skin, makeup, plus if you're Gen Z, how to get those pesky millennials off your necks. Millennials look younger than who? You. <laughs> And is Gen X delusional for saying they look younger than everybody? And in case, you know, you've never seen me before, hello, I'm Danielle. I'm a New York City skincare expert, and on this channel, we discuss everything skincare and aging, particularly from a skin of color lens. I mean, we talk about everything from eye cream to under eye filler, from hair loss to excessive body hair, but in a fun and entertaining type of way. I'm your homegirl, big sis, little sis, auntie, just helping you get your skin together. Now you might have seen some of the discourse around Gen Z looking older than millennials, which hit a fever pitch when this video, which oh, at the time of me filming, stands at over 20 million views, hit a fever pitch. Apparently Gen Z is like aging really rapidly. It is mainly because of the stress. Come here. We live in a time nowadays where millennials look way younger for their age, while Gen Z looks way older for their age. If you don't believe me, I'm Gen Z. Get closer. I am Gen Z and nobody ever believes me. In case you were wondering about that video that he was stitching. Apparently, Gen Z is like aging really rapidly. We're like, how old your girlfriend? He jokingly was like 42 or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, she looks great. I thought she was like 32. She's 22. And then if you were wondering about the video today we're talking about. I was humbled so quick tonight. I was on live with my boyfriend and someone was like, how old's your girlfriend? And John jokingly responds 47. And the girl comments, oh, I thought she was early 30s. I am 23. But do millennials really look younger than Gen Z? The reason that Gen Z looks so much older is because millennials was not allowed to wear makeup in middle school boys was not checking for you if you have makeup on and when i'm talking about makeup i'm talking about you could wear a little uh mascara a little eyeliner but the boys was not checking for the girlies with the foundation makeup we're talking about black people here no but white people's doing but it was not a flex to have weave or makeup like it was a thing they wouldn't even talk to you if your hair was fake we, you, you, they will roast you so bad if you have weave outside of like braids or something at least in Colorado, where I'm from, Denver, where I'm from, I cannot speak for anywhere else. But being a natural girly was a flip. And for me personally, we didn't even start wearing makeup until we was in our 20s. And y'all had to watch us fail in our 20s with thick ass eyebrows, raccoon eyes. Like, this is why they look older. They don't start wearing heavy ass foundation in, in middle school, high school. So... Y'all could come for me if you want, but... Millennials were born between 1981 and 1996, give or take. Some might sweep in those born in 1979 as well as 1980 into the millennial generation. Right now in 2024, millennials will be 28 through 43 years old. Gen Z, on the other hand, they were born between 1997 and 2012, give or take. In 2024, Gen Z will be anywhere from 12 to 27 years old. So as we know, those who are part of the same generation tend to share similar experiences based on circumstances that occurred as they were growing up. Millennials were shaped by things such as the Great Recession of 2008, 9-11, and the expansion of social media and the internet. Millennials are a bit unique from other generations in that we grew up in an ever-changing technological landscape. During my formative years, I used landline phones, cordless phones, beepers, and cell phones all before I turned 20. Now, Gen Z, on the other hand, has been shaped by things such as the Great Recession of 2008, although in a different way than us millennials, school shootings, the 2016 election of Donald Trump, COVID-19, and the George Floyd protests. 
Now, if you're a millennial or Gen X or boomer, you might be like, <laughs> we, we went through all of those same things as well. However, we ain't go through all of that in our formative years while also being constantly bombarded by it over and over again because of social media. Y'all, Gen Z is stressed. And as a generation to mostly not know our world without social media, that stress has been at their fingertips. Everybody's making fun of Gen Z's for looking, oh, well, Dan, can we get a second to thaw out? For half of our adult lives, the world was ending. Guys, we grew up on the internet and know way more than we should. We are exposed to too much information. We're all <laughs> too woke. That's <laughs> aging the f out of us. And then I would say since at least I was 16, we watched most of our peers become rich off the internet. I'm talking 17, 18 year olds just rich and famous as hell for no reason. And back then, it wasn't like that. Wait till I get my money up. Botox immediately. <laughs> At the same time, I feel like the more I do to my face with the lashes, the makeup, like I'm just going to look even older. So I just rather stay natural. Please don't hurt my feelings in the comments trying to sit there and guess my age. <laughs> I don't want to hear. Some racist old guy stitched my Palestine video and said I was millennial. What the? Who's actually Gen Z that you thought was way older? Because for me, it was Jordan DeStyle. I thought this man was easily 38, but he's only 26. Now that I'm thinking about it, why would a grown ass 40 year old call himself Jordan DeStyle? <laughs> That don't make no kind of sense. <laughs> Anyways, drop some name in the comments. Who's younger than they actually look? Plus, you old people that look young, that's a mutation. Back in the 70s, men in their 20s had the George Jeffersons already. Like, it has to be the stress. Like, the weight of... Don't look at my eyes, man. Y'all, I'm just tired. It's like f***ing 1 o'clock in the morning. Don't roast me. Alright, so what makes us age faster? Of course, genetics play a part, though thankfully not as huge of a role as you may have thought, which is good because then if you've got, you know, genetic factors working against you, there are things that you can do in your lifestyle to work against that. But when it comes to what can accelerate aging, stress, alcohol, sun exposure, and drugs are at the top of the list. Stress produces a hormone called cortisol, and cortisol, that's the enemy of collagen. Collagen is the protein in the skin that keeps it snatched. So the more you stress, the more your snatchedness is on a decline. The sun's harmful rays are responsible for about 89% of the physical signs of premature aging. UVA rays, which are the rays that accelerate aging and worsen pigmentation, those joints can also penetrate windows. This is why sunscreen use and safe sun practices are important for all the generations. Alcohol, it can dehydrate hydrate the skin and also inhibit skin's ability to produce collagen and elastin. Smoking, including vaping, can also have negative effects on the skin's collagen, amongst other things, which can accelerate facial aging. And as children of the 80s and 2010s, we have seen with our own eyes the effects of both the crack and the opioid epidemics. Now, Gen Z has been stressed, like we mentioned earlier. And the CDC says that they are among the top demographic of vaping users. And although vaping is touted as being less harmful than smoking, it's still harmful. A lot of people, Gen Zers themselves, blamed vaping as the culprit. However, when I went to go look up the actual cigarette smoking rates, it seems like millennials lead the pack there. Smoking is more prevalent amongst millennials, 44%, followed by Gen X consumers, 36%. Meanwhile, the trend of cigarette smoking is less likely amongst Gen Z, who only account for 29%. So we kind of got a mixed bag here, but bottom line, no no matter what generation you in, smoking and substance abuse is not gonna be kind to your skin at all. In addition to avoiding or limiting the factors that we just mentioned, you also want to take good care of your skin every day at home. Indications of youthful skin include a glowing complexion with a more even tone. A simple yet effective anti-aging routine that you can start from your mid to late 20s is an antioxidant and sunscreen during the day and a retinoid at night. But sometimes you need more than what you can buy over the counter. And in order for you to get that type of prescription treatment, it typically requires for you to go to a doctor and you gotta schedule an appointment, go to the doctor. You gotta be seen by the doctor. You gotta pay your copay. You, you actually gotta put pants on. But however, not with agency. And thanks to agency for partnering with me in today's video. Agency is an online platform where you can get your own custom serum tailored to your specific skincare needs to help with things like the signs of aging, dark spots, and other types of discoloration without ever leaving the house. You ain't even gotta leave the bed if you don't want to. So how it works, you take a skin quiz where you can detail your skincare history, any allergies, any sensitivities, 
yada, yada, yada. And then you submit photos of your skin that are reviewed by a real live licensed dermatology provider who is then gonna determine which active ingredients go in your serum to help your skin. One of the main things that I love about Agency, cause you know, I got a subscription with Agency too, is that you ain't gotta go it alone. They're not just gonna write a prescription for you and then be like, beat it. There's gonna be full guidance along the way. You go into your portal and it's gonna tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, what you can use your custom serum with, what you can't use your custom serum with, and if you have additional follow-up questions, you can easily message your licensed dermatology provider. They also check in with you to see if you have any questions, to see how your progress is going, to determine if they need to either increase or maybe decrease the percentage of the active ingredients in your custom serum. I also love that you can get access to ingredients that you typically would need a prescription for. Gold standard ingredients like hydroquinone and tretinoin, and you don't even have to leave your house, you don't have to leave your office, you ain't gotta do nothing but just sit up a little bit to take your pictures. I'm currently using their Future Formula and my custom prescription contains 0.035% tretinoin. Tretinoin is a skincare ingredient with long receipts on its efficacy to help with things like smoothing the skin's texture and helping with things like fine lines, wrinkles, and dark spots. It also contains 1% dexpanthenol, which is an ingredient that moisturizes the skin and helps to reduce itching and flaking. 5% transamic acid, which helps to even the skin tone, helps with discoloration and 4% niacinamide. Niacinamide helps with a bunch of things for the skin, including helping to strengthen the skin's barrier, it helps with the discoloration, and it also acts as an antioxidant. And it might even be less costly than what you've already been buying over the counter. So the future formula that I'm using, which is their anti-aging custom serum, a two month supply of the future formula is going to be $80 per shipment. Dark spot formula, a two month supply is $70 per shipment. Or when you get both prescriptions, you get a little discount. Head to the description box box for more info and to sign up. Now, let's talk about these Gen Z wigs, which I realized that wasn't really a smooth segue, but let's go. A lot of my fellow millennials who were chiming in on this subject, a lot of them blamed the lace front wigs that Gen Z tends to wear. I mean, a lot of people wear lace front wigs, but you know, they zeroed in on Gen Z's early adaptation of the lace front wigs. And when we were their age, we used to get clowned for wearing fake hair and wigs, psh, wigs was for grandma and them. Now that's true, but fake hair was also really whack back then. So were wigs. A 1987 wig would age anybody. We didn't wear wigs when we were in high school because wigs were really, 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 really bad. I mean, the, the pack of yakky hair was barely passable back then. But I mean, people still wore weaves though. But once that hair tech got better, the masses were in them wigs and the weaves, and that's including millennials, Gen X, and them boomers. Of course we know wigs don't automatically make you look older, especially not the good ones. But after observing the way that Gen Z wears wigs, I've come up with my own theory. And that it is the placement of the baby hair that is adding to making them look older. One of these signifiers of youth is a heart-shaped face. However, as we age, that heart starts looking like more like a triangle when the jowls and the jawline and everything because of gravity starts pushing down. As a matter of fact, when you see an aged face and that face is being enhanced to look more youthful, either through non-surgical or surgical means, nine times out of 10, they're trying to bring it back into that heart-shaped face. Here is a visual representation of that. Note the wide forehead and the narrow jawline on the younger version and then as we age as gravity takes its force you're seeing more of that triangle shape as the jawline seems to widen y'all y'all picking up what I'm putting down so my theory is the placement of excessive baby hairs which is typically a featured style in these Gen Z wigs it narrows the forehead which gives the illusion of a wider jawline keyword being excessive baby hairs you know a little swoopity swoop here and there and you know that's not gonna hurt anybody but it's also the makeup as well. Now remember this young lady from the TikTok that we showed at the beginning of this video? A huge part of why she's being mistaken for 32 when she's only 22 is the way that her makeup is applied. There's actually a study that shows that 40 year old and especially 50 year old women look younger when wearing makeup. However, that same study also found that 30 year old women look no different in age with or without makeup. However, 20 year old women looked 
older when they had makeup on. I'll put the link to that study in the description box. Make sure you check that out. As an older millennial, born in 1981, those of us with darker skin, we, we ain't wearing makeup when we were younger. You know why? <laughs> Cause makeup back then sucked for us. We had nowhere near the shade range and variety of makeup that's available right now. But I'm pretty sure that if we had makeup that actually matched our skin, plus social media to teach us how to apply it, we would have been wearing makeup too. There is a common misconception about makeup. Makeup products themselves don't age you. So, you know, it's not like you're gonna put your foundation on and your highlight and contour and then, you know, you done put five to 10 years on your skin. But your practices with that makeup can age you. So for instance, one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen that ages almost everyone, I don't, I very rarely see anyone that looks good with this kind of makeup, is when you have this super matte foundation finish paired with other super matte finishes. This looks harsh, it looks dry, and it's, it's aging. This can be one of the most unforgiving looks no matter what age you are. Instead, you wanna have a makeup look with a mix of finishes. So if you're gonna have on a matte foundation, maybe you put on a gloss or a cream blush to balance out the textures. Softer, fuller brows are also more youthful and they're definitely appreciated as you get older because thinner, sparse brows do age you. But of course, glowy, beautiful makeup starts with glowy, beautiful skin. So, you know, don't forget to hit that description box for that link to find out more about agency. To further drive this point home, let me give you this example. Not too long ago, millennial rapper Nicki Minaj and Gen Z rapper Lotto were publicly beefing. Now, what they was beefing about, I don't really remember. Something to do with a song and the Grammy. Y'all let me know. Y'all let Auntie know in the comments and, you know, re rehash it there. However, the point of the matter is the discourse always went to how old Nicki Minaj is. Nicki Minaj is too old to be doing this. Nicki Minaj is too old to be doing that. Lotto's fans was even calling the Pink Friday rapper Grandma, which I, I personally took offense to because I'm a year older than Nicki Minaj. I was like, God damn. Now, now see Gen Z, this is what y'all, this is what y'all old, this is what y'all do. When you disagree with somebody that's older, you always gotta be bringing it. Oh, that's why you old, right? And this is exactly why there are millennials getting on the internet telling y'all that you look older than us. However, in the midst of their beef came this tweet reply from Nicki Minaj. So, you know, I'll read it to you just you can see it. So Lotto says, I've ignored countless subtweets since March and instead addressed you in the DM. You're asking why I didn't speak up in your defense. It's the same answer I gave you when you asked why I didn't congratulate you. You're literally older than my mom trying to be a bully, Nicki Minaj. To which Nicki replied, all this time I thought you was at least 35. Which, no shade, Nicki did have a point. Lotto's styling did have me at least thinking that she was a lot older than her actual age of 23 at the time. But while researching for this video, a Lotto fan page came up on Instagram and when she's not in her typical performance or promotional outfits, Lotto looks every bit of her early 20s. Like heck, she looked even younger than early 20s. Like some of these pictures, I'm like, she a teenager? She might have been a teenager, I don't know. But as soon as she gets really, really done up and the bodysuits and the extravagant wigs and the extravagant makeup, she does tend to look a lot older. I'm personally not surprised at this, that someone's styling can make them look older than they are because at 42 right now, I look younger than I did at 32 because of the way I was styled. Like heck, I look younger at 42 than I did when I was 12. You can watch about all of that in this video right here. You know, after you finish watching this one. So does Gen Z really look older than millennials? I don't think that Gen Z looks older than millennials. However, I do think that people perceive millennials and Gen X as being younger than they actually are because our perception of older age is off. So for example, I don't look like what a 42 year old look like 50 years ago. I mean, look at this Geritol ad. All of these women in this ad are 46, AKA three, just three short years older than what I am right now. But while certain lifestyle factors like smoking, which was very much prevalent back in this time, as well as their styling makes them look older, one of the reasons why we think they look older than they do is a theory called retrospective aging. There's a lot involved in it, but basically we look at them in their dated clothing and 
and dated hairstyles and perceive them to be a lot older. This is explained more in this video, which, you know, I'll link in the description box for you to check out later. And this retrospective aging thing kind of also happens in reverse. So when I was five, I thought that the kids who were in the fifth through the eighth grade in elementary school were so much older and bigger and, and they just scared the mess out of me when I was five. However, when I got to high school and college, I realized how small and young and not so big all of those kids were. And then now at 42, when I look at college kids, I'm like, y'all are some babies. Let's further drive this point home. So look at this rendering of two of the golden girls with more modern makeup and hair. And them updates make them look at least a decade younger. And I'm pretty sure if they were able to Photoshop in more modern outfits, they would probably look even younger. The wild thing about aging is that folks will clown you for being old and looking old. But the second you do something about it, they clowning you for doing something about it. So what do you do? those people. I would actually love for the relationship between Gen Z and millennials and Gen X to be more of a mentee mentor relationship versus this you look old, no you look old thing that we got going on that's been dominating social media. We have a lot that we can be learning from one another. Also there's this. You know, it's funny, a lot of these conversations about aging involve just what women look like, but some of these men, they look like what they went through. But all jokes aside, aging is a privilege. And if you wanna look even better as you age, you need to check out this next video because these celebs look even better at 40 plus than they did in their 20. Click on this video and I'll see you there. Thanks again to Agency for partnering with me on this video. To learn more about them, make sure you check out the link in my description box.